It's about the principles, it's about the rule of law. You don't have to stay silent when you see something that you don't like that is inconsistent of these timeless principles. Trump's behavior is conscienceless, showing utter disregard for the safety of others, consistent irresponsibility, callousness, cynicism and disrespect of other human beings. Contempt for truth and honesty, and for norms, rules and laws. A complete inability to feel remorse, or guilt. Americans should expect far more from a president than merely that he not be provably a criminal. They should expect a president to comport himself in accordance with the high duties of his office. Trump's lying, his self-regard, his self-soothing, his lack of empathy, his narcissistic rage, his contempt for norms, rules, laws, facts and simple truths, have all come home to roost. If anything has cheapened or trivialized the process by which Trump was impeached, it was House Republicans' refusal to treat the proceedings with the seriousness the Constitution demands. If there's one thing we know about President Trump, it's that he lies and he cheats. Endlessly. And shamelessly. But still, mostly, incompetently. By vesting in the House the sole power of impeachment, the Constitution makes it wholly the House's business how to decide whether to impeach a president. There should be no schools, bridges or statues devoted to Trump. His name should live in infamy, and he should be remembered, if at all, for precisely what he was, not a president, but a blundering cheat. Any litigator will tell you that adding to your legal team on the eve of trial most likely will not produce better lawyering but, rather, chaos. Just as crises can provide a test of anyone's character, they do so especially with presidents. America promised equality. Its constitution said so. My school books said so. The country wasn't perfect, to be sure. But its ideals were. And every day brought us closer to those ideals. Trump is not some random, embittered person in a parking lot, he's the President of the United States. By virtue of his office, he speaks for the country. In a case involving this private conduct, a president should be treated like any private citizen. The rule of law requires no more, and no less. The public has no interest in whether the president acts boldly or timidly in his personal affairs. A president's unofficial or non-presidential actions do not affect millions of people. When Trump lied and claimed credit for the greatest economy in the history of our country, even though it wasn't, and even though he inherited a strong economy, and goosed it up with trillions of dollars in debt, it didn't matter to most people. Dershowitz may be a genius in some ways, but he's not necessarily the advocate you want on your side. It's also not true that abuse of power is not impeachable, or that a statutory crime is necessary for impeachment. Among Donald Trump's many flaws as president is one that's as fundamental as any, he simply doesn't understand his job. Trump's attacks against the judiciary reflect his view that only he should be able to decide what he can and cannot do. Trump took a solemn oath to preserve, protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. After his years in the job, he ought to know something about that document. Particularly as a supposed conservative, Trump ought to know something about the relationship between the federal government and the states. The Constitution sets out no standards for granting pardons. 
They require no consent from Congress, and courts can't second-guess them. Trump revels in issuing pardons, because that power is essentially absolute. Ever the blameless narcissist, Trump always insists that the buck stops wherever convenient, for him, personally. For Trump, success always has a single father, himself. Failure has a hundred, everyone and anyone else. The media. The Democrats. The deep state. Disloyal staffers. Prosecutors. Judges. Anyone who doesn't do his bidding or sufficiently sing his praises. That's what it's all about for Trump. It's always about winning, winning for Trump, by making him look good in each day's reality television production. It's never been about the country. President Trump is treating the judiciary the way he treats the media. But the harm created by these attacks could be far greater. It's simply not bias for a judge to explain her reasoning in a dissent. Judges certainly have political connections and strong political views, but that doesn't mean they can't rise above politics when they hear cases. We expect them to, and the law presumes they do.